color. You can rely on the basic kit and you can complain for weeks. Yeah, without any further ado, because time is running quickly, I would like to continue. Um, the lecture today is mainly based on the ultimate experience of Emacs. You have seen today a lot of different techniques, mostly CAD and press. I would like to show or to use my time to show you what we can do with Emacs Serum to bring it up to the real limit. But before I start my presentation, please lean back and relax a little bit. I would like to show you or give you an insight about my daily performance.
you very much. As you have seen, the performance is mainly based on the manual approach. And by the way, I would like to introduce you to the team. It's Marie Witt and yeah, myself. We are a force of two. And what we do mainly is we are asking ourselves every day, shall we do it digitally or manually? Of course, the whole industry has already been driven by the digital influence. And of course, there is purely a right for a digital approach. But when it comes to all the details, as you have seen it in the movie, I think the manual approach of a technician is still absolutely, yeah, there's a need to do that. And to obtain and to achieve results like this, the four units from cuspid to the uh, right central, you see the value is there, the quality of the porcelain, the connection and the support from the soft tissue, translucency, all those parameters, they were perfectly matched. And of course, digital can have an influence by producing a core, but what you see on the outside, what you really face, that's pure manual work. So, perception is one of the most important things in our daily life because before we go any further, first of all, we have to study the role model called nature. And by doing so, it is absolutely important. I would say it is really a necessity in our days that you take clear pictures because if you just look at this picture, you can read for hours what nature is telling you. And my question now is, do you really think you can mimic one of those incisors just by stain, press, or press, stain and glaze? I don't think so. Nature is a little bit too smart, a little bit too clever, and it doesn't make our life so easy. No, in a case like this, you, pu you purely have to build up. You have firstly to understand nature. You have to look inside the tooth with all those parameters, with all those little details. This picture is one of the, the most important ones because you can look inside. You see nicely the degradation of value. You see the different types of dentin. And now my question again, do you really think you can do it just with press, stain and glaze? No, I don't think so. I have to disagree. You really have to understand the natural code by looking inside and then clearing up your mind, put all the materials and ingredients together, do a layering, do a build up. And the layering concept is not really a new one. I mean, it's been used for already four generations, but what we have to understand is, if it comes to a layering, you have a core insight and then you follow strictly what nature is telling you. You do your dentin buildup, you do your mammalons, you apply your incised layers, you do some blue on the outside and then you cover everything with enamel. So far so good. But the problem is, we need, of course, a kind of recipe to do so. To achieve this kind of result after the first bake, as you can see, everything is purely at the right position. And then we keep going with a second layer, which is purely enamel. So we cover everything, almost like a sandwich. And then we got exactly the result we were looking for. So finally, after polishing, after glazing, you got the total match. Machinery is really important for, do that, or for doing that means, first of all, we need a very precise and reliable firing furnace to make sure that the quality of the porcelain is really at its best. At the same time, we need a pressing device which guarantees if we press our substructures, they have no limitations, they have no boundaries. So I'm really grateful to say that now with the new generation of furnaces, I have lifted up myself in terms of precision really to the next level. So it's an ongoing game. But when it comes to color, you can rely on the basic kit and you can complain for weeks or years that you are missing one special powder, or you do something else. You create your own color recipe. And I want to introduce you right now our personal color recipe, which is mainly based on the fact that we always manipulate our dentin. So if your dentin is not bright enough, we add on some Opel effect number four, 30% or 50%. As you can see, we can also create our own bleach colors. And if you see it in contrast to the original bleach color, you see this color has life inside. And nevertheless, it is pretty bright. So if you change your dentin, you got all the options you really need. Furthermore, we develop for ourselves for our everyday use, our personal color concept, which is based on the fact that we use TI2 as a base enamel, and then we create our own blue, less strong, a little bit stronger, 
The next one is TI2 mixed with OE4 to get it more milky. And you see, it's always the percentage which makes the difference. One is a little bit softer, the other one is a little bit stronger. But just by using one base material and just mixing it with something else, we can create all kind of colors. And that's what I need. Once again, nature is not so simply uh, constructed that it makes it or that it makes our life so easy to say it is just an A1, it is just an A2, it is just one enamel. No, no, no. We need all those color schemes. And as you can see, we can arrange every kind of color effect by using TI2 as a base material when it comes to enamel. Even here with this amber effect. And of course, we do exactly the same with our dentin. We use dentin pure. Sometimes we mix it with deep dentin to get it more compact, to get the color a little bit closer to the natural demand. Or in some cases, we just bring up the value slightly by adding on OE4. Once again, this is no rocket science. It is pretty simple as long as you got the recipe ready. And the recipe contains all those changes. Before you have seen it with a B2, now you can see it with an A2. The pure A2 has this little grayish green color scheme. If you apply 30% of deep dentin, it's gone, completely gone. And you got a clear B2, A2 and so on. And in some cases, once again, it is absolutely mandatory to apply a little bit of OE4 and you are completely gone with all those value problems. I can tell you and I can promise you because we are using that for almost a year. And then, of course, we came up with the idea to do something which is close to a marginal porcelain. In the past, we did butt joint margins. Thanks God to all ceramics, there is no need for that anymore. But we need some chroma around the margins. We need some complexity. We came up with the idea to use dentin mixed with deep dentin and CT material. And the result is a very powerful, not too opaque, with a pretty much calibrated value outcome. And we are applying this material around the margins and the result is being shown here. As you can see, this is really a complex buildup in terms of the color, but it is very logic because here you can read and see what we have used. We were using the standard materials, no secret materials, but we were putting everything together almost like a cooking recipe. We are using ingredients, they are already there. They are on a high quality, no question. But then we start to modify it. And in combination with the new machinery, with the new furnaces, we got an outcome which has no porosities, no voids, Everything is crystal clear. We are able to change and to drive the color into every direction so we can mimic nearly all natural effects.